All right, thanks for joining us again. Here we continue sub-element T3, covering radio wave propagation. Three exam questions on your technician class question pool test come from this segment. And T3 is divided into three groups. First up, T3A, radio wave characteristics, how a radio signal travels, fading, multipath, polarization, wavelength, absorption, and antenna orientation. First up, T3A01, why do VHF signal strengths sometimes vary greatly when the antenna is moved only a few feet? That answer is multipath propagation cancels or reinforces signals. T3A02, what is the effect of vegetation on UHF and microwave signals? And that is absorption. T3A03, what antenna polarization is normally used for long distance CW and SSB contacts on the VHF and UHF bands? It is horizontal polarization, horizontal. T3A04, what happens when antennas at opposite ends of a VHF or UHF line of sight radio link are not using the same polarization? Answer is received signal strength is reduced. T3A05, when using a directional antenna, how might your station be able to communicate with a distant repeater if buildings or obstructions are blocking the direct line of sight path? Try to find a path that reflects signals to the repeater. T3A06, what is the meaning of the term picket fencing? That is a rapid flutter on mo mobile signals due to multipath propagation. T3A07, what weather condition might decrease range of microwave frequencies? That is precipitation. T3A08, what is likely cause of irregular fading of signals propagated by the ionosphere? That is random combining of signals arriving via different paths. T3A09, which of the following results from the fact that signals propagated by the ionosphere are elliptically polarized? That is, either vertically or horizontally polarized antennas may be used for transmission or reception. T3A10, what effect does multipath propagation have on data transmissions? Answer is error rates are likely to increase. T3A11, which region of the atmosphere can refract or bend HF and VHF radio waves? Answer is C, the ionosphere. T3A12, what is the effect of fog and rain on signals in the 10 meter and 6 meter bands? That causes B, there is little effect. T3B covers electromagnetic wave properties, wavelength versus frequency, nature and velocity of electromagnetic waves, relationship of wavelength and frequency, electromagnetic spectrum definitions, UHF, VHF, and HF. T3B01, what is the relationship between the electric and magnetic fields of an electromagnetic wave? They are at right angles. T3B02, what property of a radio wave defines its polarization? The orientation of the electric field. T3B03, what are two components of a radio wave? That would be the electric and magnetic fields. T3B04, what is the velocity of a radio wave traveling through free space? That answer is A, speed of light. T3B05, what is the relationship between wavelength and frequency? Answer is wavelength gets shorter as frequency increases. T3B06, what is the formula for converting frequency to approximate wavelength in meters? D, wavelength in meters equals 300 divided by frequency in megahertz. T3B07, in addition to frequency, which of the following is used to identify amateur radio bands? The approximate wavelength in meters. So you look at 6 meters, 2 meters. T3B08, what frequency range is referred to as VHF? That answer is 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. T3B09, which frequency range is referred to as UHF? That would be 300 megahertz to 3,000 megahertz. 
T3B10, what frequency range is referred to as HF? That answer is C, 3 to 30 megahertz. T3B11, what is the approximate velocity of a radio wave in free space? That is 300 million meters per second. T3C covers propagation modes, sporadic E, meteor scatter, auroral propagation, tropospheric ducting, F, region skip, line of sight, and radio horizon. T3C01, why are simplex UHF free si signals rarely heard beyond the radio horizon? UHF signals are rarely, are usually not propagated by the ionosphere. T3 C02, what is the characteristic of HF communications compared with communications on VHF and higher frequencies? The answer is C, long distance ionospheric propagation is far more common on HF. T3C03, what is the characteristic of VHF signals received via auroral backscatter? B, they are distorted and signal strength varies considerably. T3C04, which of the following types of propagation is most commonly associated with occasional strong signals on 10, 6, and 2 meter bands from beyond the radio horizon? Answer is B, sporadic E. T3C05, which of the following effects may allow radio signals to travel beyond obstructions between the transmitting and receiving stations? That is knife edge diffraction. T3C06, what type of propagation is responsible for allowing over-the-horizon VHF and UHF communications to ranges of approximately 300 miles on a regular basis? Tropospheric ducting. T3C07, which or what band is best suited for communicating via meteor scatter? That answer is B, 6 meters. T3C08, what causes tropospheric ducting? That is D, temperature inversions in the atmosphere. T3C09, what is generally the best time for long distance 10 meter band propagation via the F region? Answer is from dawn to shortly after sunset during periods of high sunspot activity. T3C10, which of the following bands may provide long distance communications via the ionosphere's F region during the peak of the sunspot spot cycle. Sunspot cycle. That answer is A, 6 and 10 meters. T3C11, why is the radio horizon of VHF and UHF signals more distant than the visual horizon? C, the atmosphere reflect, reflects, refracts radio waves slightly. And that will conclude sub-element T3. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully you will give us a thumbs up. Follow us for more videos as we release them. Be sure to subscribe so you're notified when we do release new videos. Click that notification bell so you can get those notices as we release new videos. And from 5-9 Radio, this is Kilo Charlie 9, Papa Hotel Kilo Clear.